Hello, gamers. Um, the resolution is a bit scuffed on this video because I'm in widescreen and I didn't really want to change it. So, you know, unfortunate. For my four subscribers that watch the videos will surely be unimpressed at that behaviour. But I wanted to go over the character that I respect. So I respect my Tornado Shot character, which I made a video on. Because um, I really wanted to test Nimi's KB. I was going to level something. But I realise it's just pointless. Like I've got a level 100 dead eye. I didn't think levelling another dead eye was like there's no point on it. I don't care about level 100 characters. Like if I cared about level 100 characters, I'd just fucking boost five ways all day. Um, so I just respect because it's going to hit level 100 within f three or four days, and then I'll just going to be farming on it. So I didn't care about the additional 100, which is why I respect. Um, Basically, what I've changed from the Tornado Shot character is I've brought a wand. Obviously, this is a this wand's like hot shit. Like, this is a really fucking good wand. Um, I paid fifty divines for it. I would personally say it's worth more. It's seven hundred and seventy elemental DPS with crit multi and attribute plus crit craft. Um, it's pretty hot. It's real nice. Um, so I brought that. I'm running at Zero's Reflection because it gives me curse immunity, which is a big part of how I've got the build to feel as good as it does. So I've got curse immunity, I've got movement speed, it gives me some evasion. You know, it gives me a thousand evasion, which is pretty nice. Um, Hex Reflection, unaffected by curses, and it buffs my curses. So it's all around a very solid item. Obviously, omniscience, the entire build. Nimi's obviously the entire build, so two mandatory items. Still running run in the same ring. Um, just replace the Calandra's touch with the Nimi's. This ring, you know, was very expensive, but I didn't want to swap it out, so that's why I'm why I'm running it. Um, the chest, I believe, in the first video going into an short character, I had the ailment immunity craft on here. I have recently swapped to a Storm Shroud so I could remove the ailment immunity craft and craft Fizz taking as fire and Fizz taking as lightning so that I was a bit tankier and obviously I've changed my boots to Chaos Res, Dex, Movement Speed and just life as well as the avoid being shocked from the essence and then the avoid being shocked from the Exarch modifier giving me 100% shock immunity whilst running Storm Shroud, making me ailment immune, which is really, really nice. Um, still running the Mage Blood, so big issue, right? This is not a budget build, because if I take my fucking flask off, it <laughs> gives me mana cost reduction. I can't cast my skill, so it's pretty mandatory. Um, the reason I have flat damage crafted on this is because if I craft minus seven to mana of cost, obviously, the cost of kinetic blast is zero mana meaning i'm not gaining inspiration charges which is a bad time um for the links divergent kb awakened ellie divergent inspiration awakened fork trinity and awakened gmp one has mark on here sniper's mark life tap shield charge faster attacks life tap same auras, precision, enlighten, divergent determination, and grace, obviously anomalous precision. I did try to figure out a way to get better accuracy without having to drop any auras and fuck around with stuff. I, I didn't, so this is the outcome. <laughs> it's, just, it's just like, every time I look at it, I like get a bit like, ugh. So essentially I path all the way up here to these nodes for the right side of the wand sort of cluster take this integration and take the additional projectile um alternatively you can take the power charge on crit if you don't want to run um storm rider but storm rider say this duel's pretty sick nasty it's really really good so i would just go for the additional projectile medium clusters are still running two I to I repeaters for projectile speed and projectile damage, um, as well as swapping one of the medium clusters out for basics of pain and pressure points. I did pop it, this was just better. 
I needed the crit, so that's why I've got pressure points and basic the pain down here. Always POB upgrade, not brainlessly follow a guide. Um, essentially the same tree, basically it's the same tree except you get rid of the bow nodes and you path up here. It works out pretty well. I am running Endless Wide Learning with Corrupted Blood because this was the cheapest jewel I could get this implicit on that would that I was running. Um, it just wasn't feasible on the Storm Shroud or the Watcher's Eye. Um, so that's why I've got this. Why am I being... Like, dude. Sell it to him in a minute. Um, don't need me on. So yeah, and obviously I'm running Inspired Learning. Um, I just found in maps it adds like a really nice layer of defense and the offense is good. So it fits. Um, and everything in this app everything in this area I already had anyway um, so it's like I could gain like 5% more damage from a cluster or I could, that was going to cost like 3 or 4 divines which would be good enough to use or I could just buy this for 5 um, and have a better time mapping um, the only thing is I believe I can run this here and take the acuity nodes which actually does give me more damage but I haven't looked into it or tested it out. I'm sure it does work. So I just swap the uh, Forbidden Flame, stick it up there, and take uh, Acuity because the attack speed is a lot better. You want attack speed because it's how fast you shoot projectiles and you single target damage. So even though projectile speed makes the projectiles return faster, you're shooting more projectiles, so the overall DPS is going to be higher when you're attacking faster because you're limited to the amount of projectiles that can return and shotgun. It's like really weird. Um, blood Rage, Enhance, Blood and Sand, and Frost Blink. So Frost Blink is just like my teleportation, get on a ledge, get over a wall skill. Um, the reason I have Blood Rage with the Enhance and the reason I have Anomalous Blood and Sand with the Enhance. So this gives projectile speed when you're in Sand Stance, which is pretty big. If you see, that's it without, it was Sand Stance. And that's it without. So it's definitely noticeable, hundred percent noticeable. Um, and blood rage. So it actually gains attack speed per quality. So I'm gaining an additional five percent attack speed just from linking it in the gloves that I was already supporting blood and sand with. Because enhance with blood and sand is pretty, pretty big. Um, flask, Aureus end. So this is to sort of circumvent the issue of needing an explode wand for it to be top tier. I don't need a life flask, and I found Dying Sun, it, like it was good on a single target, but in terms of clear, I don't need the clear. Um, and Aureus End was better for clear speed because you're like chaining and forking and off screening stuff with explosions. Um, and this is like a defensive layer almost because you're just exploding mobs that you can't even see. Um, I'm sure, I went for that. Obviously, Diamond Flask, Silver Flask, Quicksilver, Granite. Um, this build's pretty fucking sick. I'm gonna jump into a map, do a little map showcase. Do I have sextants on my map? No. Let's do a little map showcase just to go over the, the build at the end. I didn't do one on Tornado Shot character. Um, but this is definitely a uh, nice build. So I'm currently running Defiled Cathedral. I actually got an Apothecary because uh, I'm a bit bored of Dunes. But this is a 20% Delirium, so nothing special. Um, I'm sure it's capable of 60. There's no way it's not. Um, it's sort of going over the build. I think Defiled Cathedral is a pretty bad example because it's so closed in. But it is exceptionally good at clearing. Um, yeah, this map sucks for it, I think. But you basically obliterate anything in your path. Um, I would say don't buy Celestial Kinetic Blast, it's definitely a visual downgrade. Um, when you get like a few inspired learning buffs, you can't see shit if you get attack speed as well as running like Val Haste. So it's uh, it's not great. Pop into my Sanctum. Um, in terms of Sanctum, the build is alright. I have, I've done all my Sanctums, 
I've only failed one tank turn, that's because I lost resolve to like some stupid shit and had no resolve at the end, like I took bad afflictions essentially. Um, but yeah, it's fine, you one shot at the last boss pretty much. Um, so there's no issues there. But as you can see, the build absolutely demolishes anything in its path. It's just so nice, it's so nice compared to Tornado Shot because you don't have to aim your projectiles. It just sort of happens for you. Um, and then for single target, hopefully a Delirium boss sort of spawns or something pops up. If not, you have to wait to the, the map boss for that one. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's really, really nice. It is pretty visually horrible. So if I turn off the uh, Celestia MTX, you know, without Celestia MTX, you can see so much more. Um, I personally don't like it because of the flashing it hurts my eyes um, I have tried like in terms of like visual clarity it's better but the flashing from the kinetic blast explosions uh, gives me a bad time so if you're sort of prone to having seizures or something um, like this is visually hurting my eyes already but I'm just showing off the visual clarity of it it's definitely considerably better than Celestial but in terms of eye health um, and then for the boss, you sort of just want to hug it, shotgun it, and it just disappears. It, it has essentially got like some ramp up time, um, just due to the nature of the build. You're waiting for your projectiles to return back to you, um, which isn't the best. Um, but one of the nice parts about having a mage blood as well, because your flasks aren't gaining charges because they're active, all your flask charges are being dumped into the one unique flask you have if you're not running a life flask. Um, which obviously allows you to have pretty much permanent uptime on the Orias end in a mapping situation, which is another reason I opted for that over the Dying Sun. Um, just because I think it's, it's so, so much better Oh, Renegade. Um, I just think it's so much better than Dying Sun because you don't need the projectiles because you chain and you're forking. Um, that's an example of how the world can die. I think that will end the map showcase. Obviously, you can die in a mortal. This is definitely a zoomy map build. Um, but I thought I'd show it off. You know, this character is no way. Yeah, you're not a mortal, it's similar to Tornado Shot, your glass cannon, the clear speed is exceptional, but you do die occasionally. Um, but that's pretty much everything for this video. Um, just thought I'd go over the build, my choices I've made, and sort of why I've made them. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.